Well, welcome back to the channel everybody. We're fishing a drainage that has not been featured on the channel before. Um, if you've watched the other videos you can probably guess you can probably guess what that means. We're we're targeting the Cahaba bass so we're fishing the Cahaba River drainage which is part of the Mobile Basin. We have fished in the Mobile Basin, but we have not fished this drainage. Uh, the Cahaba bass is one of two species in the sunfish family endemic. Endemic to the state of Alabama. Endemic means found here and found somewhere and nowhere else in the world, basically. Uh, and that's the, the Cahaba bass and the warrior bass. They're the only two members of the sunfish family endemic to this state and we've already caught the warrior bass if you if you've seen the previous two videos uh, you know that already but uh, today we're targeting the the Cahaba bass it's the seventh The Cahaba bass is the seventh and final upland species of black bass to be featured on this channel. Once we catch the Cahaba bass, we'll have all seven upland species of black bass. Some people call that a, an upland species slam or a red eye slam, red eye bass slam. So we just need one more and we'll be We'll have all seven. I've caught Cahaba bass before, uh, not this year, or not with the since I got the camera stuff. Uh, so this will be this will be a first for the channel. It's the right kind. It's the target species. This appears to be the seventh and final upland species, which uh, completes our slam. That is a Cahaba bass. And not really sure if it'll show up any better there. The, the water is in the 50s, low 50s probably. I don't have a temperature gauge. But uh, when the water is this cool, they, they don't have as much color as they do in the summer, obviously, or around the spawn. But um, you can still see the turquoise there around his head there. And on the margin of the soft dorsal you can see the white fin margins on the caudal fin and he does have a, a tooth patch on the tongue you can see that that small well i don't know if you can see it i hope you can see it try it both ways there there's a small circular patch of teeth on the tongue there and so that's something the warrior bass did not have. And this is just a little guy. Well, he's mature, a mature fish, but it's not a trophy by any stretch. But it's, it's the first one, and it does complete our upland species slam for the year. Some anglers call it a red-eye slam. And this is, of course, the Cahaba bass, the last and final one of the seven. 
So we'll get him back in the water here before he freaks out. See you, bud. Finally got this Alabama bass to bite. I was watching him in this pool right here and uh, just kind of lost sight of him for about five minutes. And all of a sudden I just saw him charge my shaky head there on the bottom and he gobbled it up. He's really been eating something, most likely crayfish. It's really chunky, chunky Alabama bass. He's right there. Get him back in the water. I can't really confirm that was the fish that I've been seeing, but it most likely was. I've just been pitching. I've just been pitching my shaky head over here to this log. And just working it back out to the middle of the pool here. Don't let anybody tell you these fish are lethargic. When they want to eat something, they will run it down, just like that fish did. I wish I had the camera on. I, I doubt you would have seen it, but just because it's three or four feet deep over there. But I watched that fish charge this thing. Yeah, I mean, it was when they want to move, they they can move pretty fast, especially when they're when they decide they want to eat something. Of course the water needs to be pretty clear for them to be that aggressive. They feed primarily by sight. So this clear water obviously has a lot to do with that. Wow, there's a dead buck right there. I didn't even see it. That, uh, that's not a rock, folks. That's a bloated dead deer. And I can see the rack on it from here. It's got a pretty nice rack. I got the wind at my back, so that's why I didn't smell it. Got a pretty nice rack. I'm about to paddle over there and check it out. I'm sure it stinks like you wouldn't believe, but that's a really nice deer. It's definitely one of the larger ones I've ever found in the kayak, dead. Okay, here it is folks. You can see it's pretty pretty good deer. Um, really nice rack. It's a shame that uh, whoever shot it wasn't able to recover it. But uh, I pulled it to the shore, so somebody somebody will find it hopefully before the next flood, and uh, at least do something with the rack. Um, this thing, you can't believe what this thing smells like. Or maybe you can. Oh, wow. Anyway, you know, I, it's, uh, 
the spread right there to give you some some idea but really really nice deer and I'm assuming it was shot I mean it's obviously November I mean There we go. Really nice deer. If you know where this is, come and get it. <laughs> Another Bama bass. baby mama bass actually I take that back this one's got some white caudal fin margins which makes this a hybrid I don't know if that's going to show up but the fin the margins of the caudal fin here are white can you guys see that I don't know if that's going to show up but that is a, a hybrid Here's another hybrid. He's got white caudal fin margins. And he's obviously way too big to be a Cahaba bass. He's got the little crescent behind his eye, but it's not turquoise. He's got a continuous stripe and the those white caudal fin margins you can see there most likely well has to be a hybrid just too big and he had that continuous stripe that's never good here's another hybrid I know it's a hybrid because he's got white caudal fin margins. He's got a faint crescent there on the back of the eye. So this is obviously a Cahaba Alabama hybrid. You can see those white fin tips there. I hope you can. See ya. We just caught our second Cahaba bass. These fish, I've never, for some reason, I've just never really had a good day uh, targeting these fish. And today is kind of, today is kind of shaping up to be that way, but we'll see. Again, that's a cold water Cahaba bass right there. It's just not a lot of the distinct markings they're kind of known for. They're just not visible right now, I guess, with this cooler water. But, uh, or it could have just been where this fish was holding. Just don't know. But he's got the little tooth patch there. I don't know if that's going to show up or not. Just a little circular patch on the tongue there. Oh, sorry, buddy.
Bear my bass. Junkster. Let's see if I get my camera right here. He's a 14 or 15 inch one. Just a classic Bama bass. See you, buddy. There's a the fish. Another Bama bass. Uh oh. I don't know. It's, gosh, this looks like a hybrid. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to get him out, get on it, get that fish on a board just because it's so weird looking. Okay. This fish, I'm, I'm pretty certain this is a hybrid, but the markings are, I say that because the markings are continuous. Uh, the blotches, the mid-lateral blotches, they're just almost a continuous stripe like an Alabama bass. Yeah, this is a hybrid or a back cross. Well, this fish does not want to lay on the board. So I'm just gonna hold him in front of the camera and hope that you guys can see what I'm talking about. You can see all those blotches, how they're almost a continuous stripe. They're just touching. Um, I got, I, I counted 13 right here, but there's probably, there may be more than that but they're, they're just a continuous stripe almost. And in the previous video, the warrior bass videos, I was talking about how I count the blotches. And the reason I do that is because most Alabama bass, they have 15 or more individual blotches that, that make up the mid-lateral stripe. So, if you catch a fish like this where he's got more than than 10 or 12 then that that's almost an intermediate between the 10 or 12 he should have and, and the 15 or more that the Alabama Alabama bass has so that's that's why uh, if I catch a fish that has 12 of these blotches or more 12 or more I, I get really suspicious that uh, that fish is, in fact, a hybrid. Now, without genetics, I'm just guessing. But that's that's just something that I've noticed from... It seems to hold true in just about every drainage I've been to, where you have Alabama, Alabama bass, whether they're native or non-native. Um, when they cross with these upland species, the upland species, again, they typically have 8 to 10, sometimes 12, 11 or 12 blotches. But when they cross with those Alabama bass, uh, more often than not, you, you see 12 or more. Usually 12, 13 is the, is the number because that, that, that's an intermediate between, like I was saying, the Alabama bass, which has 15 or more. There's a yellow jacket. i got to get this guy back in the water. Um, There he goes. I 
That's a nicer Alabama bass right there. Probably 17 inches or so. Texas rig finesse worm. He might not be 17 inches, but he's, he's 16 or so. He's been caught before. You can see right here his magzilla's all tore up. And that's where somebody's probably a swim bait or a big topwater's got him <laughs> right there. But uh, very healthy fish otherwise. And the yellow jackets are, are out. They love fish. See you, buddy. There he goes. Well, I just caught this one, and it looks like a legit Cahaba bass. got 10 or 11 blotches it's kind of hard to see them this cool water they're they're not real and they're not as distinct or clear as they would be in the summer or but if I hold this fish out of the water they'll, they'll be a little more uh, distinct they'll be they'll probably if the fish gets stressed a little be a little easier to see but i'm not i'm not going to do that to this fish it's not a big fish it's probably eight or nine inches i'm going to get this guy back in the water There's the largemouth. I now have the Cahaba Slam. That's a weird looking largemouth. He's got spots in his caudal fin there. I don't know that I've, when I've ever seen that. He does not have a tooth patch on his tongue. The jaw does extend beyond the eye. It's definitely a largemouth. There's another one over there. Okay, we'll get this guy in. There was another one following him. And I was trying to catch him. It wasn't a real big fish, but it was probably 16, 17 inches. Just another Alabama bass.
There it goes. Another chunky Bama bass. Alabama bass. See you, buddy. camera off when I caught this dude for some reason um, check out the turquoise on the head right there that's pretty amazing he doesn't want to close his mouth right now well, we'll just have to put him on the board but this fish is really dark. Um, I don't fish the Cahaba drainage a lot. I'm, I'm just wondering if this, I know some misguided anglers have illegally introduced smallmouth or for some reason, it, I can, from, from where I'm at, you can be uh, in the Tennessee River drainage fishing in less than two hours. So why you would want to introduce smallmouth bass in and around Birmingham in the Cahaba drainage is beyond me. I mean, first of all, if you know anything about Lake Chatoug and what happened there, you're never going to establish a smallmouth population in the Cahaba River drainage, so don't even try. You're just going to make a big mess uh, with a bunch of hybrids which we really don't need. There's enough of that in Georgia. Why, why you would want to mess up this river is just, I don't understand that. I guess people just don't know any better, but um, we have smallmouth from Mexico to Manitoba from coast to coast. So th this, the Cahaba bass is endemic, is one of two species in the sunfish family endemic to Alabama. So you have to come here to catch this fish. It's, it's nowhere else. Um, in the world. So don't introduce smallmouth. You can drive from here and be fishing uh, the Tennessee River drainage, like I said, in less than two hours. It's, it's, it's amazing that people, I don't know, they just don't know any better, I guess, but it's a shame. Now, the reason I mentioned the smallmouth this fish is so dark. I'm just wondering. I don't fish the like I said. I don't. I don't fish the Cahaba drainage a lot, so I don't catch a lot of these fish. There aren't a lot of pictures on the internet uh, of the adults, especially larger fish over 10 inches, which this fish appears to be. So I'm just wondering if this is a hybrid with a you know a smallmouth Cahaba hybrid, or if this is just if this is normal uh, variation within the species I, I just don't catch enough to really know but anyway it's, be it's a beautiful fish um, that might be our thumbnail if he can just he doesn't want to close his mouth that's fine
and this fish does have a teeth patch I'm not sure I'll be able to demonstrate or show it to you but it's on the tongue there that circular uh, dark spot that's a that's a patch that's a circular patch of teeth on the tongue right there um, all upland species of black bass have a tooth patch except for the warrior bass which we just caught uh, in the previous two videos um, give this guy some oxygen for some reason the fish in this creek are always kind of a brown sugar color like this one I, I don't know again if that's due to the illegal introduction of the smallmouth or if they're just if this is just natural variation or if you know I don't fish over here in the Birmingham area all that often so I really can't say uh, and without genetics again I'm just guessing out here but that's all I can do as an angler <laughs> and hope that uh, this is not a hybrid well there's the fish on a board it's extremely well behaved because the water is somewhat cool it's probably in the low 50s here but that's just a guess I don't have a temperature gauge uh, that's a beautiful fish just uh, under 11 inches with the mouth closed um, get a release on this guy see ya